the way we look at the Hall of Fame is it is about making sure that our programs today realized who blazed the trail, how they blazed it, and make sure everybody today knows that there is a path of success for us to follow that's going to make us better tomorrow. Dan McCool, who was a sports writer, was there. Uh, 40 years ago, he was here at the national tournament. said, Coach, how did it feel winning the national tournament? And I said, Dan, it's like I've been buying a house. You know, I've been paying on it, and now I paid the last payment. And, and they give me the house. It's mine. So this team was the product of 10 years of work, but we had four of the best guys in the country on that team. I mean, without a doubt, in my mind, Dave Cunningham, who had gone even up a couple of times with Dave Hames, a two-time national champion from Wisconsin, was as good as anybody. Had he not torn his leg apart, you know, he'd have won it, I think. I mean, no doubt. Uh, Jimmy Miller and Ken Snyder could go with anybody, and did. And it was really fun because on one of the dual meets with Iowa where we really got stomped because they were great at the time, um, one of my boosters said, hey, your kids didn't look very good tonight. And I said, yeah, they didn't. But next time they look, we're get rural wrestling in Iowa, and they're loaded like they are. You stand up in the crowd, I'll stand up and look for you, and then you come down and take my place, and I'll go up and sit where you are. <laughs> it isn't very much fun. But these guys, these two guys, could go with Brad Smith and Steve Hunt and Iowa's national champion guys, and did. And it was really satisfying for me to be able to see them progress to that point. And Randy Ambe could have wrestled with any heavyweight in the country. He just got, I didn't do a very good job of coaching with him. You know, he, he didn't want to go to the Division I national tournament after he'd won the Division IIs. And I said, you're going, and that kind of split. And Randy isn't here, and it's too bad because he's a, he was really good. And I'd like him to be able to hear that from me now that I've grown up to be able to understand that, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you kind of grow into this. But it's, this was a good team. And there were a number of guys that went, were on the team that was in the tournament that didn't place that year. But if you look on the wall of champions in there, they became All-Americans a year or two later. So it was kind of that process of this is where they are. And then they grew into being an All-American. But just as important are the guys that were on this that stood up that didn't make any team that went to the national tournament. But they became great coaches or they became really successful business people. You know, they all got their degrees. They all ended up being successful in their life and they're good moms and dads and doing the job that, uh, that we hope that they will do as a result of coaching. This is the 1975 wrestling team. And these are the guys whether they were second, whether they were backups, whether they were fifth string, they were all important to Chuck Patton and Don Briggs and Mike McCready. And they still are today. And that's what I feel is very important and we feel very honored to be, to be placed in to the Hall of Fame, the UNI Hall of Fame. But a little bit of history, last three, like three things and then I'll get off the stage. In 1975, all of us got to see Chuck Patton voted as Division II Wrestling Coach of the Year. In 1975, most of the people, actually this is 1974, but most of the people who were on the 1975 team were the last team to beat Iowa in a dual meet, 17 to 15 in the West Gym. And I don't think there's anybody here that was there will ever forget the noise and the pandemonium that went on in the, wet, in the West Gym. It is a family and it's like it stays with you and it just, it'll never go away. And we are a family and we'd, we'd, we would help anybody that was in need, anybody that needed the help and go to their unit and, and, and go to the call. And that's what's cool about this sport is once it's with you, you, it, you just can't get out of it. We thank you for all that you did on behalf of us competitively, but for us today. Because I can tell you there's about 10 people in this room that I've called and begged, borrowed, steal, whether it was time, talent, or treasure. And every one of you has answered the bell every time I've called. And that says a lot about what this university means to you as an alum, and I thank you very much as an alum myself.